The Alpha Sessions. Hello and welcome to another episode of Alpha Sessions. I'm Gigi Harland and today I'm interviewing a wonderful artist by the name of Will Foley. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good. Very much looking forward to hearing your tracks that yeah. you're going to play for us. Yeah. Um, I self-confessed, I've been listening to your music uh, in the car on the way here mm -hmm. and there's some real earworms on the album, which thank I'm going to talk to you about. Okay. Um, the thing that struck me the most, I think, listening to you is how diverse your sound is. There's, there's songs that range from uh, sort of quite guitar driven uh, indie rock sound mm. and then other things which are more uh, kind of finger style and mm. like finger pick singer songwriter. Yeah. Is that the way you've always been as an artist or do you just experiment with different things a lot and one takes hold and then another or? I think it's really important to try and for me show like diversity. Um, I love the idea of, yeah, like as you say the heavy rock songs coupled with like the more intimate tracks i just think like my favorite band or one of my favorite bands is the beatles and what i love about the beatles is that they kind of covered nearly everything i love the range of it and i just think it's really important if you can to show a range you know but also a lot of like artists tend to um go down more of like a uh, a, a, sing, a single kind of um, minded approach with the same kind of sound. I think that's great if they want to do that. For me, it just feels right to yeah try and kind of do yeah the band thing, but also there's definitely a very much like an intimate um, guitar and lyrical thing that I really enjoy. And I like doing both, so I'll continue doing that. Wow, that's a really long answer. <laughs> no, I mean, to be honest, it's a huge topic because I think especially at the moment, there's so much pressure on artists to be very single, yeah, single-minded. Yeah. It meant like in the sense of it's, you know, everyone's trickle releasing songs yeah. and your, your turnover, like your, the rate at which people are kind of expected to be making music now is is so fast. You know, mm. people will release a song and then a month will go by and then it's like, okay, so what's next? Like things seem to have a much shorter a much shorter life yeah. maybe than they used to. So I think if you're able to hold on to your sort of your artistic vision and the kind of the world that it lives in and yeah, channel sure. that i think that's a real skill actually i think we, we're talking about like industry standards here a little bit and it's like yeah i, I just i just think you should do what you can what you can afford mm -hmm. uh and what you can and you know and create when you can and yeah i think i think maybe i'm wrong to just try and like do this sort of diverse like body of work in an album but it seems to be that most people just go down quite a similar, you know, similar sound for their releases. Um, yeah, maybe maybe they're right, but I'll just keep being wrong and that's fine. <laughs> I like that as a mantra. I'll keep being wrong and that's fine. Yeah. I think, um, to be honest, it speaks very much to the idea that I got of you through listening to your work was that you you were someone that was very, or you are someone that's very kind of in your own lane and in quite a good place with that. You know, mm. it doesn't sound like somebody that's bending to the will of what trends are asking you to do. It's someone that's got very much their own, um, yeah. their own vision, which is <laughs> yeah. really, honestly, it's so refreshing. Like, Thank to you. See. Cheers. Um, yeah, I, I don't think... I think it's something you can work on. I think that um, going on from that as well, I think it's really important nowadays that that like um, you have a, um, a solid story. I think that as much as I don't want to say it, you know, nowadays you do need to have a story to sell, to sell and. Um, for me, like, I've really recently started to understand what my story is much more. Um, like, for example, I had a spiritual healer 
who um, has been so significant in helping me give me the confidence to get to where I am. And that can only channel more the sort of the lyrical approach I go with it. Um, with yeah, I I love talking about the soul. I'm completely obsessed with this in my life at the moment, mm -hmm. and understanding myself and just trying to understand my life. And uh, yeah, meeting this spiritual healer guy, um, stay unnamed, mm -hmm. has been a huge um, revolutionary part of me getting to London and doing what I love. And yeah, and as I said, the story, I'd, I'm, I'm okay with, I'm okay with uh, that story. I think that, you know, it's all part of the artistry to understand really what you want to say, why you want to say it. And I think that once you get this story, it becomes a, much easier to to stay on brand with yourself. Mm. Yeah, yeah, to sort of stay in, <laughs> stay in touch with yourself and what your inner landscape yeah. is kind of saying at Cause, the time. Because people want to people wanna know the story. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it off air about someone who did like a 20 second sound bite for TikTok. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it got streams, but they didn't go on to look at that person. Sure. And I wanted to say just then, and I probably won't bring it up now, but it's like, well, the, I would believe the reason is because the listeners weren't aware of what the story was behind that person. Mm -hmm. I think that like someone from my area who made it kind of big, Ed Sheeran, yeah. just he had a story thing. People could connect with it. He was very connect. He understood about his hair. He understood how he could get the ginger hair into a lot of his lyrics. Right. He, um, he was really connected with the open mic scene in Suffolk where I played as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know, just like there were things that people could connect with him. And I think that is a key to artistry that people uh, like don't talk about. Yeah, definitely. I think when you have exactly as you say, like when you have a story and there's a there's a, a whole person that people can hear behind what you're writing. That's what it's it about. Automatically makes it. It's not because it's, it's not about being like relatable in a sense that I'm going to. I'm going to write about the topic that everyone seems to be talking about on social media at the moment and see how many views I can get. With you, it sounds very much like you're someone that's going on a journey. Yeah. In terms of your your spiritual healer, because mm. I'm I'm fascinated by that world as well. I'm very yeah. much in that world. Yeah. Um, is that is spirituality? I mean, in all its different guises. But yeah. have you always been? felt connected to something kind of the world beyond the things that we can see and touch or is it more of a sense of understanding your own psyche or is it a mixture of both I think I, I was to? I did feel in touch with a lot of things but then in my early 20s I started to really struggle and it led to a breakdown which is basically mm -hmm. what the album's about yeah and it's about using the music and using a lot of the songs in that album that I wrote to actually bring me back and now it's like I sing about the pain but I'm but it's positive and it's beautiful to make something very negative become a positive thing mm -hmm. but you know we're all on a journey I'm still on a journey I'm not complete in any way but um yeah like that's what I mean addicted to chaos you know like that's mm -hmm. it, I think as I my late teens early 20s I really felt like I can now um I have sympathy for myself, mm -hmm. but I think yeah, I, th I would say to friends, I say to friends a lot. Like I think gratitude is is the the end goal with a lot of these things, and I feel like I have gratitude for the pain now. Yeah, that's that's an amazing place to get to for sure. I think I heard somewhere as well that if you have gratitude, um, your your mind cannot simultaneously be in a state of gratitude and a state of anxiety. It's yeah, like a toggle switch. Like they're like opposites. Yeah, right. So and it, so if you uh, are in a place where you're feeling anxious or you're a bit it, getting lost in your head yeah. a lot, if you can anchor to things that you're grateful for, whether that's really small things like the sunshine today or a cup of coffee mm -hmm. or the big things like friends, family, pets. Pets are a big thing for me. Yeah. Um, then your you can't your brain can't hang on mm. to the sense of anxiety that's mm. feeling. So it's brilliant that you can you can take that and also with the lens of experience look back at your previous self yeah. 
that was sounds like you were moving through some quite dark water from the themes on the album. Hell yeah. And arrive at a sense of gratitude. Yes, it's amazing. You've like you've like reverse engineered it. Mm. Very cool. Well, that brings me on to the first track. Um, what a segue! That you're gonna play for us, yeah. which is Corpse Reviver. Corpse Reviver, yeah. Um, this hook was is firmly wedged in my head. I listened to this at least three times on the way here. Mm. Um, what was uh, just before you play? Can you just? Um, take me into the the inspiration like the seed of this song yeah i'd love to um uh it all happened very quickly the writing of it and i think people would hopefully agree that you know when when something's created quickly it tends to be good it tends to be there in the moment you've captured the moment and um yeah i remember i actually remember the day um but yeah, this uh, I, I wrote the song about um, a few things. A corpse survivor is a cocktail, and um, I don't know. I think I'd played a festival. I played Reapham Festival 2022, and we went back to the guy who runs the festival. And in his garden, he's got a tiki bar, and I was intrigued by what a tiki bar was. Mm. And then on the Wikipedia page, <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you the honest answer here. <laughs> on the Wiki- on the Wikipedia page, it mentioned like different cocktails that a tiki bar would be synonymous with, and one of them was a corpse survivor. And I was right. like, wow, that's really good. Yeah. Uh, so let's just Google that. And then corpse survivor was like, oh, it was like you know bringing people back from the dead. I think it's maybe I'm right in saying you'd have it the morning after that makes sense but I was like it'd be mm. cool to actually have a drink that you could like bring someone back from the dead mm. and a couple of weeks after t- uh, this festival I played I played at like a friend's gig thing and I got a photo with someone and this person looked very different in the photo to when I first met them and I was intrigued by this I was intrigued by how what my mind was doing to uh, to see someone and really just not recognize it. Mm. And it was quite scary. And then I was remembered, I was rem- I remembered when I was writing this song um, about a film uh, with Jack Black called Shallow How. Yeah, um, classic. Where basically they kind of discuss, the, the, uh, the film discusses the idea of, um, of how you interpret people for the soul or just for the external. And um, I was like, really cool. It'd be really cool to marry all of these ideas, just metaphor on metaphor on metaphor and make a song out of it. And yeah, like the lyrics came really quickly. And I don't know, there's like there's also a, another film uh, called, I think, Midnight in Paris. I've seen Owen Midnight Wilson. in Paris. Yeah, And yeah. Um, there's a lyric in that song. Uh, there's a lyric in Corpse Survivor that's completely about that. It's about the golden age fallacy. Oh, interesting. So it's just like, so there's some things that are kind of unrelatable, but I think I've played the song so much now that it, <laughs> that it all just is relatable. Um, but there's something in it for everyone, I think. Amazing. Well, I can't wait to hear it. So we have Corpse Reviver by Will Foley. Still don't recognize your face captured by my side Made me question what I see solely the inside Dimples replaced by a thief's stellar hand High on the sky changing paths when he lands A golden age fallacy eventually hits us all The past ain't great when you played like a little fool And I can't get the difference out of my mind Your features distorted and forever captured in time Reality checking with those passers-by Zone out and gossip but it's good to be alive Cliff on haze by a big black hole of doubt My eyes don't lie, it's what your energy puts out I need a corpse reviver so I can bring you back My lover The nature of it's not so discreet And will I see you if I go out on that tour? Put your picture up on my bedroom wall Love hangs on by a thread from 17 I haven't seen as much as I'd like to see I wonder what that crowd looks like in your world I've never seen someone that changes like you, my girl Does my memory lie straight to my face? 
You had the confidence but fell from grace I need a corpse reviver so I can bring you back My lover The nature of it's not so discreet I need a corpse reviver What in the world am I waiting for? Just one little corpse reviver Knocking it back But I still want more Oh, I drive back at sunrise To see the love in your eyes Completes me till I realize That the picture from freedom wasn't From freedom wasn't you I need a corpse reviver So I can bring you back my lover The nature of it's not so discreet I need a corpse reviver What in the world am I waiting for? Just one little corpse reviver Knocking it back But I still want more The Alpha Sessions Welcome back. Um, you're joining Alpha Sessions with Gigi Harland and Will Foley. And that was Corpse Reviver. That is a song off your album yeah. Addicted to Chaos. Yes. Beautiful. Um, your story, your artist story, is something that mm. is uh, interesting in that you you played the open mic scene mm. in East Anglia, East Anglia, where you're yeah. from, yeah. going to selling out venues, yes, and then you moved to London. Yes. I always find everybody's journey to London um, <laughs> in, uh, an intriguing factor because everyone has such a different experience with it. How did you find moving from there to here, like the music scene between East Anglia and London? How do I find the difference between them? Or similarities? Um, well, I'm really grateful for the um, the time I spent doing music back home. Mm. I, like, it's really served me well, just to, just so I can, un I, I just understand that scene. Uh, I found the transition quite easy, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I think if, if I'd have done it at any other time in my life, in my 20s, it would have been disastrous. But I feel like it's it happened when it did because I was ready to receive it, I think. Yeah, sure. Um, I found it quite easy. But yeah, I mean, I was saying to people, I was saying to um, yeah, you guys behind uh, off air that like, you know, uh, you go through bouts of... Um, like burnout 100% and I think that can make you know if you're on your own p pursuing something it's difficult to like keep going all the time but mm -hmm. that's what I struggle with yeah, in terms of just like I feel like I just I know what to do with you know playing and going to the venues that's all that's the fun bit it's just yeah. it's just um, sometimes it can just uh, get a bit hard but you know yeah the cycle of it gets yeah, kind of intense yeah have you found but it's, it's beautiful though it's like because i'm yeah. really i'm grateful for for it when i'm when it's good you know yeah you've got to just allow that to, to to process yes how have you found um your uh kind of energy with this album release because obviously you put so much of yourself into yeah. making a body of work and not just a body of work but as themes that a present on this album of like, you know, somebody very much going on an internal journey, moving through, uh, you know, like difficult mental health periods, swimming through, as I said before, like some, some pretty deep waters. Mm. So when you're making a body of work, you're, you're kind of reliving that, like every time you put it down on a record, whether you're singing it or you're performing it at a gig. And then yeah, it's you difficult. Go in, it's yeah, difficult. then you go into the promo <laughs> cycle where you then have to talk to people like me yeah. about it. And no, it's, it's beautiful. I love it. How have you found it? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I love I love performing the songs because I feel like there's no there's no lies in the songs. Um, it's all just I just really wanted to put everything out there that I could, and it's lovely to play it to people. It'd be nice to have a few more happy songs, and I'm working on it. <laughs> um, but there's no there are some happy there's a very there's a couple of very happy songs on the album, so I'm being a little bit harsh there. But um, <laughs> well, talking of yeah. which, your second track that you're going to play for us is coming in hot. Yes, it is. Um, not on the album. Not on the album. Not, but, but, but it is on Spotify. But it is on Spotify. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, and I, I've had a listen, and the thing that was apparent to me about this song is there's a couple of lines where, <laughs> like, there is definite humour. Yes. In there. Hundred percent. It's 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 a joke. It's a joke. It's a it's sorry. Yeah, you finish. Yeah. Well, no, I won't won't bring it up before you hear you play it. But there's <laughs> the thing that was apparent to me is that you know so often when you're going through dark times there is humor mm. and it's um it's almost sort of the ability to bring light into a dark place which is what you were saying before about making a positive thing out of a difficult situation mm. and that was something that i really took um from listening to this track mm. um so we will we will feast our ears this is coming in hot by will foley I just want to know if it flows both ways Tired of being seen through like a ghost in space Is this hard to get or are you introverted? We could hit it off on just one date Babe, I want to say so many things Scared you'll scoff at the prospect of drinks why does it seem so complicated? I just want to hold you and support your dreams. Is this a lot? Is this a lot for you? I'm coming in hot, coming in hot for you. What's going on behind those eyes? Don't you want to see what this love's like? Aren't you scared you're on a road to nowhere? I can pick you up and go for a ride. You should open up your bottomless heart. I didn't see the TARDIS at the start. So many things I disregarded So many things I put down to chance Is this a lot? Is this a lot for you? I'm coming in hot Coming in hot for you And you really could wait forever But for me, it's now or never. Is this a lot? Is this a lot for you? I'm coming in hot, coming in hot for you. And tell me to stop, it's all up to you. I'm coming in hot, coming in hot for you. The Alpha Sessions. Oh, brilliant stuff. That was Coming In Hot by Will Foley. Um, as we were speaking about before, there is a presence of humour and light in this record, um, Addicted to Chaos, which is about yeah. dealing with some difficult things, going on a journey. Yeah, for sure. Um, is there any, do you have an eye on what you would like to do next as an artist? Is there any shows that you're really excited about? Any concepts that are really um, tickling your curiosity for maybe the next work? Any, or any you, concepts? Yeah, are you st or are you oh, well, still very much in this album cycle? I could answer that question for about an hour. Uh, <laughs> but uh, let's try and be concise. Um, yeah, there are some shows coming up. I've got... Um, I've got some recordings at the Bedford coming up in Balham and um, I've got Half Moon in Putney mm -hmm. uh, February next year. Brilliant. 
so there's some cool little things I'm, I'm just you know ticking by ticking by trying to do as much as i can within reason i played every every day basically in september and um wow. i paid the consequences of that so uh, i'm just gonna take it <laughs> take it easy for the rest of the year yeah um in terms of yeah i have like things planned um i'm way more i'm gonna be way more organized for a release plan for 2024 mm -hmm. i've got music plans i've got another acoustic ep planned to be released in uh january or february and then my next album mm -hmm. wow <laughs> we'll, we'll be out we'll be out hopefully uh, next october um yeah and wow. and that don't know uh like that's a lot and that's a lot in the works like yeah, so so I'm, early which yeah. is great because then we can there's places we can catch you and we know um, yeah. where we can yeah. when your next uh, your next creation's going to be out which is amazing yeah is there um do you work with other artists a lot do you write with other people or are you very much your yeah, once you get into your own world it's yeah 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 i was i, I was uh, there was this this uh, interview question like a written question i did recently for the album and it was like yeah like how, what's your ideal situation for writing and my answer was like deep deep in a cave with a little candle <laughs> on my own no yeah i i love it personally i just think like I, I, it's all great if you want to write with like ten thousand people and just that's all love it mm. i love that for you yeah but just for me it's just this is something that i want to do on my own mm. <laughs> and again, that's okay as well <laughs> again another thing which i think makes you um quite unique in terms of a lot of the other artists that I that I know and I talk with. Um, it's quite a common thing now to have like, you know, there's like at least six writers on, on a song or like two producers or whatever, and that's fine. It produces its own, its own electricity through, you know, all different people working together. But I, I always personally love it when someone just knows what they want to say, knows what their story is and knows the, the kind of sonic world that they want it to live in. That's yeah. always like Well, I don't know what sonic world I want it to live in. <laughs> I'm still yet to find that one. But um, yeah, I, I'd love to get to that. But um, yeah, I, you know, I think it, there's no right or wrong, you know. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, for your third track that we're going to hear, yes. uh, it's called Last Chance Saloon. Yes. Is uh, This is on your most recent album, mm -hmm. Addicted to Chaos. Yep. Um, is there anything that you would like to say about that particular song before we hear it? Yeah, um, it's my most streamed song on Spotify. It's nearly at 10,000 streams and um, that's amazing because I didn't think any I'd ever get the numbers that I got uh, for this release. So people seem to like it. Um, it's about, um, it's kind of like a sad song, but I think there's really there's a positive thing because it, it's about... Um, uh, someone who said that I was like in Last Chance Saloon when I was going through some stuff mm. and for me it's to be able to quote them write the song but you know I managed to get out of it you know so for me it's a hopeful song but I guess it's a little bit sad as well but yeah I think it's beautiful amazing okay well this is Last Chance Saloon by Will Foley Final judgment sent me to the last chance saloon. And guess I crawled in on all fours underneath the bad wing doors. Bartender said that he'd seen you in the last chance saloon. And it's not true. Lend me your ear. You just reflected all of your fear. 
was it even you sending me to the last chance on a horror show of a day you put the mask on and here down in those toxic fumes was the last chance to And it's not true. Lend me your real. You just reflected all of your fear. Oh, was it easy? Chance saloon, oh, oh, regurgitation of your pent up frustration. Oh, oh, what are you gonna do? Maybe join me in the last chance saloon. Complications never cease to end Your final judgment sent me to The last chance And it's not true Lend me your real You just reflected all of your fear Oh, what are you gonna do? Maybe join me in the last chance saloon The Alpha Sessions. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. That was Last Chance Saloon by Will Foley. Um, there's a line in that song which um, made me think of, as we've been talking about, um, themes of, again, moving through, getting to know yourself on a deeper level, mm. moving through difficult things. There's a, The line in that song that stood out to me the most was... Uh, where you say you projected all your fear. Yeah. Was it you? Yeah. On first listen to... <laughs> was it to, even you? <laughs> was it even you? Right. Um, <laughs> on that, the thing that that made me think of the most was, you know, when you're in a, if you're in a relationship with somebody and let's say something happens that triggers them mm. and they can respond by, you know, people get reactive and mm. you have like different behaviours which you wouldn't necessarily do on a in a normal circumstance and it, it can be quite hard to differentiate like one like the the person mm. from their reactions mm. that they're having um did that have you had experience of that in the lead up to the song or because songs can have multiple meanings to different people i guess which is the the beauty of them but is that something you had experience with or um well it's interesting because um yeah like there is like a sort of you, you mentioned about like a relationship. It's not really like a relationship song. Um, it's like it's far from it. There's, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of anger in the song as well. Mm. Um, sorry, is that really that doesn't answer your questions. What, what was your question? Sorry, you you lost me at the relationship bit at the start. No, no, the it's question. all good. Just um, I suppose whether it not even necessarily in a relationship sense, but is yeah. it you know when something it could even trigger you. Mm. And you have a reaction to something and then you look back on it in retrospect and you can be like, oh, what part of that was like 
me and like who I am oh, God. and what part of it was fear talking so yeah. I think that's something that a lot of people Christ, that's, like a, that's a daily occurrence me that, that <laughs> in a monologue yeah 100 percent I I find I definitely with this person uh I definitely felt like at the time I was I just had no like self-confidence self-belief and just felt like anyone could say anything and I would I don't know, it was just a sad place. But now uh, I had I had some um, therapy. Um, mm-hmm. I had like really good therapy for um, a year or two. And um, Brilliant. yeah, and uh, I feel like that was life changing because it made me realize what I where what I brought to a relationship, a friendship, any kind of dynamic, mm-hmm. and what someone else would and it gave me a much better sense of just you know more like level playing field with like relationships in general Mm -hmm. and I feel like you know for someone to say some things that this person said about being on last chance loom because you're on antidepressants or whatever it's just like Christ like you know what's going on with you mate yeah (laughs) (laughs) rather than what's going on with me right Uh, so it's basically just like that really Mm. that lyric that you mentioned yeah a lot of things that are externalised often need to be internalised yeah but I don't exactly I don't think people can sometimes I don't know this song's about yeah just like gaining self-awareness as Mm -hmm. well yeah it's I think on note on therapy like I mean I think everyone would benefit, even regardless of whether or not you think you need it. But a really brilliant analogy oh God, yeah. that I heard of therapy was like, if if I took you to a house you'd never been to and took you into one room and all the lights were off and I said, right, there's a door on the other side of that room, walk across it and open that door. Mm. You're going to bump into stuff. You're going to hit your shin on the table. You're going to step on a plug. You're going to have a bit of a nightmare Mm. getting across there. Mm. What therapy essentially does is I could take you to that room, switch the light on for 10 seconds. Mm. You'd have a look and then I'd turn it off again and say, right, there's a door over there. Walk over there. You're probably still going to trip over some stuff, Mm. but you're going to have an easier time getting to that door because you can kind of see what the layout is is yeah, of things you have beautiful. some light on the situation I can't remember who I heard it from now but I love that 100% and that reminds me of something my therapist said where it's and I try to I tried to write a song about it no one nick this title uh, <laughs> on but, the record on the record because uh, this is something that I'm work, currently working on <laughs> but it's exactly what you said but in a different way it's like um, my therapist said something about like pruning back the swamp swamp being um, just you know the the weeds of the mind that you can get caught up in but yep. it, i guess it's this idea that you can keep battering down the uh swamp until a slightly better pathway occurs mm-hmm. then it becomes a road then a highway right so it's kind of what yeah. you're saying i love that it becomes a road then a highway because that i love that that yeah. kind of that makes me feel like it's an ongoing thing as well it's not something like you have an issue and then you have therapy and then it's done Forever, oh god, right? yeah. It's an ever evolving thing. Hundred percent. The swamp's on... always growing. Yeah, we're always you know on the road. You, I think you'll like this one. My, uh, me, and my sister have this. Sorry, my sister and I. Mm-hmm. Sorry, mum. My sister <laughs> and I uh, said uh, have this kind of metaphor that we talk about, where it's like we are the um, the sculptor, and we're sculpting the ice figure, but it's always snowing. So it's like the the weather's always against you, but you can just you can increase and you can always like perfect this sculpture, but yeah. but weather will have its way. Mm, I love that weather will have its way. So it's like it's like you know, but you can you can keep the sculpture, uh, you can keep the ice sculpture as beautiful as you want. But I don't know that there's there's so much with that metaphor mm. that I uh, that I love. But it's just like yeah, you know, life's always against you, and I think but but you can do so much to make it beautiful. Amazing. Well, I am looking forward to hearing when weather will have its way whenever it <laughs> whenever it appears. Hopefully, yeah. let me just write that one down. Yeah, twenty twenty four. What did you say? Like October? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, there we go. I'm calling it now. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Amazing. I could say more, but well, another time. Amazing stuff. Well, where can we find you online? Like, what are your socials? You're on Spotify. Yeah. Obviously. So, obviously, yeah. So Spotify, it's just Will Foley. Uh, just like a little, it's just the, uh, my icon is just me with a little pink background from the album. Um, and then on social media, it's Will Foley Official. F-O-L-E-Y, Will Foley Official. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for coming in to have a chat. It's been brilliant. Thank and you. And can't wait to hear more from you. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you so much for your questions and um, you're a natural. Thank you.